Curious about plans for monitoring the old bridge during pre-construction and other activities? Listen here. One of the things we've been discussing is about having a system in place so we can have a year of data. Is really a safety mechanism to make sure that we don't cause something to happen to the existing bridge that renders it unusable before the new bridge is complete. So can you tell me, does this, is, is the concept of weather monitoring also attached to this bridge yes. monitoring? So that would be more than just to, for safety data, that would be for uh, informing the construction problem. It's weather monitoring, it's movement of the bridge, and I think we also have a water level monitor so we can track that data. So we would, we would like to get this thing installed on the bridge by the end of the month so we can start tracking you know, these levels and so on through the course of the, the heat of the summer. And so this is basically a telemetry package that gets attached to the bridge and the, the port allows us to attach it. Right. And then we have the data. And the question I think I asked was uh, who owns the data? We do. So we own the data. The Hood River White Salmon Bridge Authority owns the data, not well, the yeah. port. Correct. Yes. Okay. So the bridge authority owns the equipment and the data. Now, would we share the data with the port? I would certainly hope we would. It's a public record. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm asking about. And I especially want to understand because it's possible that uh, this data generates knowledge that the bridge is about to fall down, right? I mean, just to say something. So, so uh, having some process in place. If, if it shows that the bridge is about to fall down, the bridge is in the process of falling down yeah. on this data. So there's no safety uh, act mechanism. The port decided not to add in anything additional. This is specifically for certain things. We had discussions with the port, port engineer, and to maybe add some instrumentation to this package that we could give back to the port, but the port elected not to add this data because I believe, Kevin, your HDR said that they don't really see a need or a use for the information. Yeah, ODOT during their biannual inspections have never requested that, that we have. Okay, that. so where I'm confused. So I thought that the purpose of this was that when we are constructing the new bridge, uh, we want to know that the actions of constructing the new bridge are not in any way causing disruption to the old bridge. That's sure. correct. It's but it will not tell you passively whether or not there's things going on with the bridge that could damage it. Not in non-construction periods. Yeah. Okay. So right. telling you whether there's any motion that is detected at it, that, or point. whether that motion is at a level that would cause concern. It's yeah. just simply going to tell you Something based on moving. temperature movements and weather movements throughout the year what the existing bridge is doing, but it's not going to weigh that against any kind of like criteria that says, hey, if it moves X, then it's, it's, it's going to give you raw data. Yeah. Okay. But and there, there was the option of adding instrumentation to this so that yes. we would have knowledge of the stresses on the bridge from operations. That's correct. The, 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 port, the, port, the, port, the port's engineering company has said they do not see a value to that. Correct. correct. Okay. And they don't see a value based on the Oregon State ODOT bridge inspections right. and their reports from that. There's nothing there that indicates the bridge needs any heightened inspections from what they've seen or anything like that. So they they looked at it, they evaluated it. There's nothing that indicates that's necessary. So they chose not to. And it, it would have added significant cost as well. So correct. So um, again, what what we are going to monitor is that if you think about drilled shafts yep. or pile driving, we'll probably do a pile driving study, test study to see with this instrumentation, are we causing any movement back yep. on the bridge by driving piles? Uh, and that gives us some engineering information of doing something alternate if we have to. So that's yeah. one piece of it. The second piece of it is gaining an understanding of how that bridge moves through the course of the year and also wind and everything else will help influence how the bridge gets built. Right. Yeah. And I'm certainly not in a position to challenge the ports engineer on any of this. I just wanted to understand what it is, what are the limits of what we're doing? And that kind of would inform the question of 
what are the obligations to inform the simplest thing to make sure that the port always has access to data and that their engineers can review it as they wish. Are we looking at every pile on this 600,000, every pier? I believe, every, yes, they put yeah. equipment on every pier. Yes. And so does this seem is, a little excessive to spend six hundred thousand dollars? No, we wouldn't do that. And it's like, it did to me when we started, and by the time we were done, I was convinced. Okay. So I thought my understanding was that that was something that became important when we understood that the current bridge is resting on right. gravel. That that we did not foresee this when the current bridge was thought to be into bedrock, but that now uh with the change in construction techniques that have been necess necessitated by the, the the same forces that caused us to change the construction techniques also cause us to want to be more uh informed about the motion of the current bridge. i think it increased the concern we probably would have always said you should go out and monitor the bridge to know right. what it's doing just in case um even if it was sitting on bedrock but the heightened concern was when we found it wasn't in bedrock that vibrational impact increases the potential. So we want to know when they go out and start doing that work, is it really impacting it? We also spent a little bit of time talking about an independent bridges inspection beyond what ODOT does uh, and whether that would provide value um, or, or need. And I think we shied away from that. We didn't. We talked about that maybe being something that we come back to and talk about in addition uh, later on before we actually get started on inspection. What it's the reason to do that? Just to have uh, a third party um, kind of assessment of what's there. ODOT's been doing the inspections. They believe their two year cycle is adequate. Do we need a third? And I think it was just like you brought up if we go ahead and do that, does that start to create more liability for the port and ourselves that doesn't provide a lot yes, of value? Enough on is why would the bridge authority need to perform an inspection of the old bridge, which is not our bridge? Behind that, Arthur is like when you go to typically start construction, you'll go out and take a survey of like houses around you, right? And you'll video them, oh, especially if you're going to do to prove that there was no crack in somebody's foundation before you started because a lot of times once you start construction you if you don't do that everybody had house that had a problem is now all of a sudden somehow you caused it right so right. the thought was is everybody comfortable with the inspections and the stuff that has been done on the existing bridge as the baseline information right and does the authority want their own baseline information to say okay we've done our own inspections yes we think and we agree that this is the right baseline information to protect your interests, or are you okay adopting the port stuff? So and it's kind of really ODOT, up to you, yeah. which, ODOT which is ODOT and independently so inspected, and so it's probably fine and should be good, but it was just, do you want to do that? So it was a, a discussion item. We didn't decide to kind of go one way or another, but it was just, should we think about this and then come back in a year and talk about it again? So I. I guess I'm trying to cover it because it's something we talked about. We went through, we decided to, those same questions you're asking. Does that make sense? Does it do that? Or why would we need that? We asked ourselves right. the same questions and said, okay, so let's let it lie for now. Right. And uh, the ODOT inspection says the bridge is a POS. Um, so <laughs> how does... How do we, <laughs> so... That would suggest that our need <laughs> without any need for additional inspections. Though. Right, right. Why would so. you need to go beyond that? Because what what damage are you going to do to something that's so we kind of felt generically that the instrumentation we're putting on the bridge on the piers gives us enough information to to kind of tell us we're either doing something to the bridge or we're not. Right. Now, the integrity of the bridge itself and how either weak or stiff it is, we're not looking at. Right. That's that's right. part of the liability that we have. That. And the reality is that the ODOT inspection done in cooperation with the port, there's all sorts of things that it can't 
know they they don't know the integrity of the concrete at the lower levels of the. They don't know what's the, going on inside the steel. Right. They don't right. know what they don't know. Right. <clears throat> so, and we wouldn't be able to get any further insight into that unless you spend a lot of money. <laughs> I just want to. I think this helped. Me. No, it's I'm happy. There is. I mean, it's the same kind of discussion we had. as well. What's yeah. the benefit nice. of that? Why? I appreciate that. Thank you. If you want to talk to the Port of Hood River about concerns over the bridge and safety monitoring, their next meeting is June 17th at 5 p.m. You can also send me an email if you want addresses for Oregon or national legislators. Thank you.